Hey everybody and welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the basics of how to pull distinct values. If, for example, if you wanted to make any kind of a dropdown or combo box in Power Apps from an Excel file or SharePoint list, today's video will cover that pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and jump straight in. Now I'm gonna start out with a blank Canvas app and we're just gonna click Create. We'll just give it a couple of letters that are random as a name. So I have a single Excel file and I'm gonna do it with a static file, but this will also work with something like SharePoint list and things of that nature. You just have to know how to basically handle those naming conventions. So what we're gonna do is you'll see in our menu over here, and we're going to find what kind of input we want. So the more basic ones are up top, but if you go to the input section, you'll see things like dropdown or combo boxes. I'm personally preferable to combo boxes. So <clears throat> we'll go ahead and add that one here. Now, the general idea, if we click preview, when you click here to expand, you have all of the items for your combo box and you can select multiple or just a single item. And you can also filter by adding in text. So there's some pretty robust functionality built in. Now, if we want this to be connected to a given data source, we would have to either create a new table up here or we can choose from the different connectors down here. So you have Excel online, which is one option, but if you scroll through, we also have the option to add in a static Excel file or really just use any of these data sources. So you can kind of choose through uh, whichever one you're interested in. You can refresh, change environments, do all of that stuff. So in this case, we're gonna use the Excel option and I'm going to use this Excel file here. And just to give you a quick overview of what this file looks like, you'll see that we have it right here. So I have in this column, no unique values, but in this column, I have in progress and in progress as duplicates. And in this column, I have the number 10 and the number 10 as a duplicate. So what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and open this file. You select the table from that file and choose connect. Now, <clears throat> once you have that pulled up, you'll see that we have our data type table and you'll see it's just pulling in table one. So we can select this and then we have data source, it's connected to the table. And then as we scroll through, you'll see that you have the status for display fields and you have the input text placeholder. So this is basically, you'll see right here, find items. So it's just that text that shows before you click anything. Now, if we select this, you'll see that we now have a couple of fields that are pre-populated based on essentially what Power Apps is going to pull in. All right, so right now we have table one when we select this combo box. The other option, if you need to find out where the items are actually stored or rendered, if you go over here on the left-hand side, you'll see in this dropdown, we have this items section, which is basically saying, what are the items in the dropdown? So what we'll do is we'll select this and then we're gonna modify our formula up here. Now, whether you're using a SharePoint list or whatever source, it shouldn't matter as long as you can actually pull in that source and you know the column names. So when I click on table one here, you'll see that I have number of deliverables, project and status. Now, in this case, you'll see all of the values as well. Now project, there's no point in trying to have a distinct option because they're all different. But in this case, we could try from status and number of deliverables. And the reason I've kind of set things up this way is you'll see that the first and last should basically be combined into one under status, but under number of deliverables, it's the second and last. So we're just going to see this distinct function in action. So if we wanna type it out, I like to expand this box and we'll start from scratch. We'll type in distinct, and then you can put in your quotes. And you'll see here, you just, or you'll put in your parentheses, and then you'll see it's going to be your source and then the expression. So in this case, if you want, you can tab down, but we're just going to be using table one and then comma space, and then whatever it is you're looking for. So in this case, if you start typing, typically it will, if you're, if you have the right table selected, give you options that correspond to the columns. So number of deliverables and then we can close out our parentheses. Now we can click preview and you'll see that we have 5, 10, 20, 25. Now that's really all that there is to it, but we're gonna go ahead and do that same thing on a separate column. So we can hit Control Z, Control V, 
and now we have a second drop down with the exact same data. So we can click on our table to see what those column names are again, and in this case we want to use status this time. So we simply replace the text in here with status, and when we go to preview, you'll see that we now have only four statuses, in progress, started, not started, and canceled. So in both cases, it is bringing out only the unique values in that dropdown. So again, it's just that distinct function. That's really all that there is to it. I will put a, I'll really just copy and paste this into the description. I hope it's helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.